Hello everybody. In this video we'll take a quick look at Robot Mesh Studio and learn where everything is. In particular, we'll learn how to create a new project, understand what the various windows do, and then eventually figure out how to download and run the code that we've written on either a Mimic or on a real robot. Let's start by creating a new project. I'm here at robotmesh.com slash studio, and you'll see here in the top right corner that I happen to already have an account. Now you don't need an account to create a Robot Mesh Studio project. Uh, the only benefit that comes out of being registered is it allows you to save your work. And as we create new projects, they'll show up here under the My Projects uh, window. So let's create a new project. I'm gonna click this button. It's going to ask me for my target platform. So Robot Mesh Studio can be used to program either a physical uh, VEX robot or a simulation of a VEX robot, either IQ or V5 or Cortex uh, for that matter. And so what we're going to be focusing on in this video is on creating a mimic or a simulation of a VEX IQ robot. So to do that, I'm going to click on VEX IQ Mimic as my target platform. I'm going to come up here to language and I'll choose my programming language. Um, in this particular instance, I'm going to use Blockly, but depending on the hardware that you choose, you may have some different choices here. I know now that the VEX V5 uh, Robot Mesh Studio supports Python, Blockly, C++, and Flowall. But in this case here with VEX IQ, uh, I'm content just to use Blockly. And then finally, if I want to give this project a name, I can. I might call this my first project. And if I happen to have folders already set up, I can save my project to one of the folders here. In this particular instance, it's enough for me uh, just to leave it here in the root folder. So let's click Create and see what's going on. Okay, so in a second here, my uh, program loads. Uh, I have a couple of tabs. We're going to go through each of them individually, talk about what's happening here. I have a description tab, which is where I can um, record my design process. Uh, for those of you who are involved in VEX Robotics competitions or VEX IQ competitions, this is essentially an online version of your engineering notebook. It's just a place for you to uh, document your design and to leave notes for any other people who might happen to be working on this project. Next is my programming uh, area. In this case, I happen to have a Blockly project. Uh, for those who don't know, Blockly is a scratch-based programming language uh, created by Google. What makes it really powerful is that it can be used to generate Python codes. That makes it a very exceptional tool, in my opinion, uh, for getting started off with programming. We can see that here, that if I go into one of these libraries, for example, um, let's say Vex Motors, and grab Block and snap it together, what will happen here in the generated code tab is it will start building the Python uh, script behind this block. So in this particular instance, there's not much happening here because, well, I haven't done much. Um, but over time, we would see this area fill with text. Um, next is the mimic. And all a mimic is is it's a simulation. It's what we call a simulation involving VEX uh, hardware in Robot Mesh Studio. Beside the Mimic tab is the device monitor. We might think of this as like a virtual equivalent of the VEX uh, brain. So if it's a VEX V5 project, we can think of this as a virtual version of the VEX V5 brain. Uh, if it's an IQ project, we can think of it as a virtual version of the IQ brain. But what we can do here is we'll see that depending on the hardware that I've selected, I'll either have more or fewer ports. And I just click on the port that I want to plug a piece of hardware into. So for example, port number four. And it asks me, what is it that I want to plug into this? So in this case, I might choose a motor and hit OK. I might come down, say, to port number eight and plug something else in, like a uh, bumper switch sensor, hit OK. And so when I'm programming, and actually if I come back to Blockly now, where before I had an unspecified motor, now I can program and add this motor. So I might say motor four, run forward at 100% power for 200 centimeters or 2000 millimeters. If we take a look at the generated code here uh, in Python, we can see that it added that line for us. And so as we make changes to our code, this will update on its own. So for example, if I wanted to not call this motor, motor four, let's call this uh, my motor.
we can see that the text here in the block uh, is now my motor. We can see in the generated code tab that it's now my motor. Um, next, as this isn't so much a issue when doing block-based programming, uh, but if you're going to work with Python or C++, uh, very frequently you'll run into errors and syntax issues. Perhaps you miss, uh, mistype a command or you miss a semicolon. Down here below is our program status area, and those kinds of errors will show up here in the bottom. Uh, when we're all set to go, uh, whether it's running our program on a physical robot or doing so virtually, we have up here the toolbar to uh, download, run, and debug our program. And again, depending on what options we have selected, whether we're building for a real robot or a virtual robot, we'll see more or fewer choices here. Um, all these windows can be easily customized and tailored to suit your preference. So for right now, I have the tabs uh, all laid out individually, but if I want to do a split screen, so for example, I want to be able to code and then I want to be able to work my mimic at the same time. So for example, you can see now I have a motor floating in space and um, let's just do something fun here. Maybe I need a little more room, for example, I can click on one of these hot spaces uh, and either close the window or I can just resize it. So here I might configure my, set, my setup here um, so that it's a little more conducive to building virtually. And we'll just take a quick peek at some of the libraries here in the Mimic so you can see that all of the 3D models are basically sorted by functionality. We have specialty devices like motors and sensors. We have uh, field elements, game elements here, and we have things like connector pins and standoffs. And so for example, if I wanted to connector pins here, I can just start building like that. And now for the coup de grace, I present to you a finished Robot Mesh Studio project. So here we can see a completed description tab, it has some text telling me a little bit about this robot, an embedded YouTube video that has been added using this rich text editor. Uh, I have a finished Mimic that has been built. I also have a device monitor now that has a number of motors and sensors plugged into it. And lastly here, I have uh, some simple Blockly code here to help control my Mimic. Again, if I pin the Mimic so we can see what's happening here and adjust my view. So I'm just using my middle mouse scroll wheel to zoom out. And if I hit play, this code now should run on this Mimic. Success. So while not the most impressive program perhaps, uh, we'll be certainly doing a lot more of this in future videos. So we'll take a look at constructing the Mimic as well as programming both the simulation and the physical device using Robot Mesh Studio.